her trust was violated and she began questioning everything. Am I really loved? Am I really valued? Am I being judged? Find out how far she fell. Plus, actually stomped over here to tell them, turn your stupid music off. And I walked onto this parking lot and I didn't realize I was in church. An unlikely church in an unlikely place. Hear why they're seeing lives transformed on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. The Philadelphia Eagles are now six and one. They have the best record in the NFL after beating my Redskins on Monday Night Football. Well, part of the Eagles' success is due to the team's chemistry. Recently, we brought you the story of some of the players baptizing teammate Marcus Johnson. Well, not long after, Eagles defensive end Chris Long announced he would donate the second half of his 2017 salary to benefit educational charities. How much is that worth? One million dollars. The campaign is called Pledge 10 for Tomorrow, and it encourages fans and businesses to match Long's, do Long's donation. And then earlier this year, the Eagles defender announced he was donating his first six game checks to fund scholarships to schools in his hometown of Charlottesville, Virginia. Wow. These are just amazing. <laughs> I mean, it just you, 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 you take a step back and go, wow. Yes. Um, all the bad things we've heard about sports and yeah. all the controversies. And here an entire team is stepping up to say, it's no, wonderful. we want to make a difference. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. You know, you can you can just sort of complain about the darkness or you can light a candle. They're lighting a candle. I love that. Yeah, and love in that. addition, they're lighting it up on the field, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's working. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I wish him well. Yes. Well, the Bible calls the church the bride of Christ. And marriage is a picture of that union. And sometimes ceremonies give us a glimpse of the joy we will one day experience when we are united with Christ. Recently, a groom was overwhelmed by the moment he saw his bride walking down the aisle. Quinton Reed tried holding back tears and even had trouble standing as his soon-to-be bride, Ashley, made her way toward him. Quentin told ABC News, the moment I saw her, all of the emotions, the joy, the happiness, the anxiousness overwhelmed my heart. I just looked to God. I was so thankful for that moment. And the new bride, Ashley, said the moment actually took her breath away. It's everything I've been wanting since the day I met him. Wow, that's the way to go to the altar. <laughs> that's a wonderful way to go to the altar. Whoa. <laughs> and again, in our culture today, it's like is it the culture of permissiveness, uh, the, the culture of promiscuity. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see this, it really is, yes. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> well, recently a Michigan kindergartner had no money for school milk. Well, it turned out all she needed was a little su sunshine. And Sunshine is a five-year-old who saw the need and wanted to do something about it. Well, the little girl dumped out her piggy bank and told her grandmother she wanted to give her money to buy milk for her classmate. With all the hatred in the world that this little five-year-old just has so much love and compassion for her friends. And um, I'm very proud of her. Very, very proud of her. And we're going to do... At her request, we're going to do whatever we can to help the kids in her class um, with milk money. <laughs> Sunshine's grandmother then posted this on Facebook. Thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful little girl. It is precious <laughs> to see that kind of compassion and kindness yeah. in a child that young, where it's just inherently in them to not see one of their friends go without. Yeah, it's a good name, too. Sunshine. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yes. Well, today in our country alone, nearly half a million children are in the foster system awaiting permanent homes for many years go by before adoption takes place. And sadly, some age out of the system altogether without ever finding a family. But recently, one sixth grader in Utah received news that changed her life.
Well, it's hard to even talk after just seeing that. You know, the joy of a child and finding a forever family is amazing. Um, Orvin's Promise is the arm of CBN's uh, ministry to children, orphaned and vulnerable children around the world. We don't so much work with children like this little one who are finding forever families, but with those who are not. It, you can't imagine the power of having a place to belong, and we do do that. We have a, a part of our program that's called Keeping Families Together, you know, helping kids not go into orphanages because of poverty. If you'd like to be a part of what CBN is doing and how they're making a difference in that, find out more about what Orphans Promise is doing. But the joy, the sheer joy of knowing I'm going to have a permanent mom and dad, a place to call home, somewhere where I belong is just too much. <laughs> I, she couldn't put words to it and we can't either, but what an awesome, awesome video to share. Yeah, yeah that was a wonderful picture. Oof. Uh, and a wonderful picture of all of us, yes. that we're all orphaned, we're all We should rejoice God. in the same and way, right? Time, you know, the, the rejoicing that happens yeah. in heaven uh, over just one. Yeah, woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to have a big party one day. Yes. <laughs> well, one Dallas church is reaching the city's homeless population by taking its message to where they live, not in a building, but on the, out, uh, but on the outside in a parking lot. Soul Church has performed this ministry more than 20 years. Charlene Aaron recently visited the downtown streets of Dallas for a first-hand look. Six days a week, this Dallas parking lot looks plain and unremarkable. Then on Sundays, it transforms into something special. You've heard the children's rhyme, here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the door and here are all the people. Well, here on this hot Dallas city parking lot, there's a church without walls aimed at ministering to the invisible people, the homeless. For 22 years, Soul Church has used praise songs to send a message that it's here to feed mind, body, and soul. And there's much feeding to be done. Statistics show homeless camps here have multiplied from just 40 to 200 in the last two years. Pastor Leon Burt heads Soul Church. This is it right here. It looks like a parking lot right now. But uh, we get here at 5 o'clock in the morning. We start setting up all these different tents. We've got like uh, 10 tents over there, and then a whole bunch of tents over the people that are eating. We have a live band every weekend. The hurting and broken find open arms to welcome them. In my church, you know, you can come drunk, you can come strung out, and a lot of them do. And they, and they have a, a repentive spirit, and they're broken. They just, they want to get back where they were, you know. And a lot of, you know, that some have been in church, some have never been in church, and uh, they just come here to get loved on. They're seeking acceptance. Something Pastor Bird knows well. I was, uh, I was free racing cocaine when I got saved, and I didn't care if I lived or died. And so I, I can understand where they're coming from. Hot meals are served along with the gospel. And while the menu has changed over the years, the message remains the same. We started off with 10 gallons of coffee and a basket of donuts. Now it's feeding hundreds of people at one time. Really good food like salmon and you name it. No place I'd rather be. Since it began, Seoul has never canceled a service because those who need it always show up. If it's raining, we have hefty bags. We poke our head through the top, my arms through the sides. That's our sole attire. Okay, <laughs> that's our soul attire. Plenty of hefty bags. And then uh, we'll be dancing in the rain, getting crazy. Snow and ice, it doesn't matter. Got to be here every weekend. That's one thing they can count on for sure. Sunday morning, there'll be somebody here. Well, let's bless the Lord one more day, amen. Pastor Jeffrey Parker says those attending their services come from all ages and backgrounds. The demographics you have from 16-year-olds from to 70- and 80-year-old, it really breaks my heart when I see our seniors living amongst uh, this population in homelessness, uh, some of them without any hope, some of them very sick. Still, he sees the ministry making a strong impact. We begin to see the testimonies of them getting jobs now and them moving into their own apartment now and them showing up at Bible study now. And so all of these are, are evidence and signs that, you know, what they've professed on Sunday, they begin to walk it out during the week. And so we see life change taking place here. Deborah McKernan once blamed God for the death of her two children and wanted nothing to do with church. 
After serving time for drugs and prostitution, the outdoor church literally called out to her. Living in a nearby shelter and annoyed by the music, she decided to pay a visit. Actually stomped over here to tell them, turn your stupid music off. And I walked onto this parking lot and I didn't realize I was in church. And it drew me in and I saw people, I saw love is what I saw. And with that, I saw no judgment. Everybody was just like me, broken, just broken. And I, I started staying later and later, you know, and eventually I, I found Jesus on this parking lot. And now I know that God positioned me here because he knew I was not ready to walk into a church with walls. I couldn't do it. Today, Deborah serves at the church. You know, I still have a long way to go. You know, I still, I'm now still a mess, but I am not where I was. Work in progress. We I are. am, <laughs> I am, and it is all because of the Lord. I gave him nothing and he still gave me his everything. And I can't, I can't think of enough. Just some of the reasons and miracles that keeps Bird spreading hope one soul at a time. And any given weekend, there'll be 30, 40 people that come up to get prayer commit yourself to the Lord. I just pray that this goes on for a long time. Charlene Aaron, CBN News, Dallas. Oh, join in that prayer. I hope it goes on for a long time. Every single Sunday out there in the parking lot, rain, shine, snow, doesn't matter. And I love that t-shirt, Jesus squeezes. <laughs> you know, how do you bring love to a hurting world? Well, you go to them. Uh, Jesus, he came to us. He comes to where you are, how lost you are. He wants to seek you out. And that's what the church needs to be doing today. Well, up next, how one family is sharing the stories of the Bible with their children and their community. Well, surveys show that most people become Christians before their teenage years. And that's why Bree and Cliff Patterson are sharing the stories of Superbook with their children. Bree and Cliff Patterson and their kids love Superbook. Bree likes to share Superbook with friends and family whenever she gets the opportunity. Giving extra copies as gifts for kids with their, with their birthday presents, we'll slip some into their, their gift bag or uh, when kids have come to trick or treat before, we'll pass them out that way. But I decided to take a couple to our local library and they put them into the, actually the county's circulation system. So now kids all across the county can be exposed to Superbook. Three out of four Patterson kids look forward to Superbook movie night on Fridays. The youngest isn't quite ready yet. The kids like Superbook because they think Gizmo is really funny. Uh, they're always laughing. Even my two-year-old will laugh at the funny things he does. The dad said, don't go in there and get that, the jetpack and he just went in there. I like the songs. Sometimes there are songs on there. And I like the questions. Their favorite part is the Explorer DVD, the interactive portion of the episode. Or as Shelby puts it. It's a DVD that um, surprises you with a DVD that you didn't even have yet. You draw the character that was in there. Oh. We were drawing Queen Esther. Cliff and Bree have been sharing Superbook with their kids since Hannah, their oldest, was two. It just spurs great conversation and uh, it, it prepares their hearts for what is the real, what's the truth. And that's what I'm passionate about is the truth. I, I want them to always be able to come to me and know they're going to get the truth. And that's why Superbook is a great tool for us as a family because I feel that it, it, is, it is definitely grounded in truth and biblical knowledge. I choose CBN to support because I trust their integrity. Um, I trust the vision that God has given them. Um, that makes me want to cry. Um, and I'm just so thankful for the fact that they're raising up the next generation with Superbook. They're helping to lay a foundation for generations. And you can be a part of laying a foundation for generations by getting the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. We're up to 43 languages now and on our way to our initial goal of 55 languages uh, where we want to get these stories out in 
uh, in Hindi, in Tamil, Telugu, uh, Bahasa Indonesian. There's the broadcast map. And you can see where all the different places are where we're broadcasting the good news. And the best part, you can be a part of that. You can be a part of sharing the good news, not just with the children, the grandchildren in your family, but also with the children of the world. How? Just by joining the Superbook DVD Club. For a gift of $25 or more, we'll send you out not just one copy, but three copies of a DVD. The current one we're offering is Superbook Explorer, which has two episodes in it, the story of Job and the story of the Good Samaritan. Plus, there's a Bible background video attached to it, as well as a theology video, so you can have your own Sunday school right in your own home uh, with Superbook Explorer. And you don't just, just get one copy, you get three copies. So your neighbors can be involved, uh, extended family can be involved, you can be involved. So if you want to do this, call us now, 1-800-700-7000, and say, I want to join the Superbook DVD Club. Terry? Well, up next, after beating addiction once, she gave in to temptation. I felt I was beyond redemption now. I might as well go out and do whatever now. There's no hope. You don't want to miss this story of hope and redemption. Sean Sheeran didn't start using drugs as a teenager. She was almost 30 years old and a wife and mother when she began taking pills from people on the street. But before long, Sean was part of an alarming trend now in our country, heroin addiction. But the root of her addiction was buried in a secret from her past. I kept it a secret and that secret really was eating me up. The secret Sean Sheeran was keeping was that from eight to 10 years old, she was molested by a man in the neighborhood. He was also the pastor of their home church. I remember um, walking away from that experience. It happened on several occasions, um, feeling um, alone, feeling scared, feeling confused, um, feeling, uh, why, why me? Why is this happening to me? Adding to the confusion and pain was a father who was distant and uncaring. I remember longing for his approval a lot, and I wanted him to um, accept me and love me, and I never felt that I could really measure up to that. I remember in high school, I wanted him at my track meets. I was in track, and he, he never showed up. I don't remember being angry at God, but I do remember being angry at the church, angry at my, my father. At 16, she finally confided in the church youth pastor about the molestation. The senior pastor resigned, but that caused division in the church, and some blamed Sean. I felt hurt and I felt rejected because this, this church family, this church body was my family, and it's what I knew as a family, and I felt um, rejected again. I remember just, uh, I became more hardened as a person through that experience. I put up, um, self-defense mechanisms where I, I wouldn't let people hurt me anymore. And I did things my way. I wanted to be in control and I didn't care who I hurt. Deep down though, Sean still longed for the approval of men and became promiscuous. When that proved empty, she got married at 22 to a pastor. I was still angry with the church. I was still angry with people who called themselves Christian. And I, I put on a happy face, and like I put on my church face, but deep inside, I, I was hurt, I was struggling, I was miserable. Yeah, there was this deep, deep root of um, just depression, uh, re rejection that I was still carrying with me. Am I really loved? Am I really valued? Am I being judged? After seven years of marriage, the couple had a daughter, Kyra. Meanwhile, Sean was sinking further into depression and began drinking. A few years later, she began a ministry for the homeless, hoping to make herself feel better. She felt no judgment from people on the street and found connection. Feeling like, wow, this is cool. I can really talk to these people. And, it, and I, felt, I felt comfortable. I felt like I have fun and I can, I can relate to these people. Venting uh, my feelings, my frustrations, 
And um, it didn't take long where I was taking pills from people on the street. And I ran out of those and um, I started dabbling with a little bit of heroin. Sean's addictions and behavior were destroying her marriage. It was like I was sabotaging everything that I had. I was self and I didn't understand why, but I was walking away from everything that God had given me. The drug took over and I was not myself at all. And yeah, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt a lot of people. How can God ever forgive me now? I've completely walked away. Eventually, Sean's husband divorced her, sold the house and took custody of their daughter. Sean isolated herself and started using crack. I felt I was beyond redemption now. I might as well go out and do whatever now. There's no hope. I was a mother, like, what am I doing? My daughter is not with me now. That's like the ultimate horrible thing to feel as a mother. Ultimate shame, yeah. A few years later, she had another baby with a boyfriend and named him Isaiah. She kept them on the move, afraid she was beyond even God's help. But in 2011, Sean finally decided to stop running from God. And I uh, was laying in my bed and I felt this love like I've never ever felt in my life come upon me and come in me and sp he spoke to me, this love spoke to me and he said, um, I love you. I have a plan for you. I allowed you to go through what you went through. Are you ready now? Are you ready to surrender? And at that moment, I wept. I wept from the depths of my being. And I, I surrendered. I surrendered to God. I said, God, I'm ready. Sean called her twin sister, Dawn, who helped her get into a detox program and gave her and Isaiah a place to live. Sean also found a counselor and a loving church family who helped her heal from years of rejection. I truly can say that I have forgiven, forgiven the pastor, and I've forgiven people in the church. And so every doubt, every lie that I believed was lifted off. It was lifted off. And that encounter with God changed me. It, it changed me. His love moved me and it changed me. Today, Sean has a good relationship with both of her children, as well as Dave, whom she married in 2014. I feel like I'm lovable, that I can be loved. And it's such a beautiful thing knowing that I belong to Jesus, that I am His. And that's the truth that Sean traded for the lie that she wasn't worth anything, that she had gone too far, that her life could not be redeemed. You know, God loves us so much. If there's a strong message that I saw in Sean's story, it's God pursuing her time after time after time after time. And then the enemy comes in, the enemy of God, the enemy of your soul and mine, and plants a lie deep in the core of us that continues to infect our souls and push us further and further away from God because we are afraid to trust anyone. God is so worthy of your trust. He's so faithful. He never leaves you, never forsakes you. In the deepest trial you've ever been through, He's been right there walking through it with you. You know, at the end, she said, you know, I finally got to the place where God said to me, are you ready to surrender now? Surrender isn't just waving a white flag, it's trusting. It's saying, God, I believe you are who you said you are. And I believe you love me the way you say that you love me. Trust God today. He's so worthy of your trust. Just ask him into your circumstances, into your heart and in your life and let him change you. Gordon? Well, if you're ready to make that decision, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us 1-800-700-7000. Let that voice say to you, that voice of love, are you ready? Here's a word from Philippians. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. For Terry, for me, and for all of us, God bless you. We'll see you again.